there, my name is Laurel Snyder and I am a writer of books for kids. I write all kinds of books. I write picture books like this one that's called Swam, The Life and Dance of Anna Pavlova. And this one, The King of Too Many Things. I write lots of picture books. And I also write books for older readers. But today we're going to talk about picture books because I have a problem. I am stuck in my house all by myself. And I am not a very good drawer or artist or illustrator or whatever word you want to use. But I have a new picture book that I have not published yet. It's just a picture book that I made up in my head and then wrote down. And now I have the words, but I don't have any pictures. So I thought that maybe a fun thing we could do today would be that I would make pictures to go with my book. And they're not very good ones. This is what I can do, right? Not so great. So I thought that maybe you would like to go make a picture to go with my book of one of the animals that I'm going to talk about today. And this is a particular kind of picture book, which is this is a picture book. It's called The Beastly Collective. And it is a picture book about different kinds of animals when they're all together in a group. So a collective is the word that we use when we talk about animals in a group. So if you have a whole bunch of dogs together, you might call that a pack of dogs, right? Or if you have a whole bunch of birds together, you might call that a flock of birds. And those might be some words that you know. Today, I'm going to tell you some words that you probably don't know. So I'm going to show you my picture, and I'm going to read to you. Should move up a little bit. I'm going to read to you about the animal that I'm holding up, and then maybe when we're done, then you will go and draw a picture of one of these animals. So what kind of animal is this? This is a chicken, the beastly collective. You might see some chickens and call them a brood. And they won't object unless they're in a mood. But why not get wacky? Go on, take a leap. A better collective for hens is a peep. So you can call chickens a brood of chickens or you can call them a peep of chickens. And that's a real word. Here's another animal. What are these? These are kittens and cats. When cats are just kittens, we call them a litter. Or sometimes a kindle, which feels a bit fitter. When but when they grow up into cats, they're a chowder, a glaring, a cluster, and also a clouder. And wilder cats that demand introduction, when gathered together, are called a destruction. So kittens are a litter or a kindle, and cats are all those other words I said, a clouder, a chowder, a glaring, a cluster, and wild cats. When they're all grouped together, if you have a whole bunch of wild cats, you can call them a destruction of cats. I think that's really cool. Ants, oh, ants comes next. These are my ants. There are four of them, so I numbered them. Ants invade picnics. They come in a swarm when the weather is fine and the temperature warm. But I hope you'll believe me and won't think me barmy when I tell you that ants also come in an army. Could you have guessed that one? What's this? This is a mole. He has a hole that he's digging, or maybe he's going to go down into it. Perhaps you don't know this. A mole's a good neighbor. When they meet and mingle, we call them a labor. But deep in their tunnels, they often will stumble. Perhaps that's the reason they're also a mumble. So if you have a whole bunch of moles together, you can call them a labor, or you can call them a mumble. I think that one's pretty cool, a mumble of moles. Next comes, what's that? I think this one's maybe my best one. That's an elephant. It says, we all know that elephants come in a herd, a sturdy, dependable sort of a word. However, whenever there's fuss to be made, for special occasions, they form a parade. So a parade of elephants is another word for a herd of elephants. A parcel of penguins is always a treat. They totter and tipple on flat little feet. They gather together, they waddle and cluster. On alternate Tuesdays, they call that a muster. So this is, a, you can have a muster of penguins or you can have a parcel of penguins. And this, we have a bunch of birds here. I'm not very good at drawing birds. This is a dove, in case you can't tell. There is a very famous picture of a dove that you could ask somebody to show you that is, is actually kind of easy to imitate, kind of easy to draw by a very famous artist. When doves swoop and fly in the air they delight, 
so it makes perfect sense that we call them a flight. But I rather suspect that they like it far less when together we call them a piteousness. Isn't that a weird one? A piteousness of doves. I have no idea where that came from, but it's something we should probably look up. And it's the kind of thing that if I decided I really wanted to make a book out of this and publish it, we probably would look all these words up and find out their origins. And then maybe there would be a section in the back of the book that would explain where all the words came from. So then it would be a book about animals, but it would also be a book about words and their origins. So that was my dub. What's this? That's a B. You can probably draw a B pretty easy. You probably know that bees come in a hive. Together they zip and they dip and they die. And sometimes they sting you, and that is the worst. And maybe the reason we call them an erst. Stupid erst. Can you believe that? You can have an erst of bees? I never heard of such a thing. I never heard the word erst in my whole life. And this is our very last animal. What's this? This is a crow. This is kind of a famous a uh, collective. People know this one pretty well. A murder of crows is a marvelous name. It's dark and it's gloomy and crows seem the same. But if that feels wrong to you, if you're a lover of birds, you can also just call them a hover. So you can have a murder of crows, which people know a lot about, or you can have a hover of crows, which is a cool one. In charms, droves, and gaggles, beasts all seem to group. Hey, look, it's a pudding, a bevy, a troop. You can't have too many, you can't have too much. A great convocation, a cloud or a clutch. The animals slither, they flap and they scurry. They run and they race and they swim and they hurry to gather together a great rendezvous. You better go join them, they're waiting for you. I wonder what you call a meeting of friends. A play date, a party, the game never ends. When you and your pals get together for fun, what word do you use when you mean? everyone. A tickle of people, a supper or crew, a curtsy, a mingle, or maybe a stew. It's fun to use new words and mix them and play with the old words you know in a different way. But after a while, it's also all right. If you're tired and finished and done for the night, sometimes the collective is just too much noise. Sometimes you get tired of sharing your toys. Whenever that happens, you've one thing to do. Make time for yourself, just one person. That's you. Depart from the party, the great beastly riot. Go off by yourself to enjoy peace and quiet. Which is something that we're all working on figuring out how to do now, right? So that is my story that I read to you about the Beastly Collective. And it had all different kinds of animals in it. And if you have to rewatch the video so that you can remember what the animals were, you can do that. And then why don't you go and draw me a picture of a collective. So a bunch of bees or a bunch of doves or a bunch of penguins or a bunch of elephants and see if you can remember the word that we used. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you again another day.